Welcome to Midwest Sportsnet. I'm Joey McWilliams, and I am privileged to be joined on the summit today by the head volleyball coach at Jamestown, Coach John Hagerly, who is a national champion now. Congratulations, Coach. The national championship is in the books. I know it's been a long season, 37-2 and two overall this year. Uh, a great ride, I'm sure, but let's, uh, let's talk about first the championship match. You took it to five sets. 3-2, had to, you know, ups and downs throughout that championship match, I know for sure. 15-13 in that deciding fifth set over Corbin. Uh, what a great battle. Yeah, they're they're a tremendous team, Joey. Uh, you know, I don't – they have two outsides who are, you know, unbelievable. One of them hits the ball harder than any player we've ever played. And uh, so we knew that it was just going – we had to do something to slow them down. You know, and, and fortunately at – we ended up on top at the end. I'm not really sure how. It's still kind of a, a muddled memory in my brain because of all the emotions, but uh, just really proud of our players. I'll watch it again someday. Wait a week or so. Wait till after Christmas and, and then, okay. then watch it. And I'm, I'm okay. sure it's going to be a great Christmas too. Coach, a fantastic year again. Great players. And we've talked about some of these players before here on Midwest Sports Net for sure. Let's start with Anna Holen as uh, she had 23 kills, 35 digs, a double-double hit, 257 pretty close, uh, maybe a little bit less than what she's done all year long, averaging 3.42 kills per set, 4.01 digs per set, and hitting 290 for the year. What a season. Yeah, you know, and if you haven't seen her play, you know, she's a little, little shy of 5'7". So <laughs> to do what she does in the back row and, and in the front row, and, uh, you know, she's a two-time first-team All-American, and that's where I'm sure she'll end up this year or, or has ended up this year. Uh, she's uh, not only is she a tremendous athlete, I think, you know, her standing verticals uh, over 31 inches. So, um, but more importantly, she is one of the greatest people and teammates I've ever been around. She has the way of bringing out the best in players and having them perform at, at levels that they never thought was possible. She just has that impact on a team. And so, uh, you know, I just can't share enough about her. She's one of the most humble people in the world. She gives all the credit to God in everything that she does and just comes from a tremendous family. And so uh, it's been a pleasure coaching her for five years. Well, we always appreciate uh, the attribution there here on Midwest Sports Net. And, and I had a chance a couple times this season actually get to watch some videos online and, and through the, the playoffs there too. Yeah, she, she's not tall and 31 inches, that's nearly half her height. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's uh, it's quite a standing vertical. Another play we have to mention really quickly: ha Callie Hagerly triple double in the championship match. I mean, what a way to go out! Twelve kills, thirty-two assists, twelve digs. Uh, just a fantastic effort on her part too. Yeah, and, and she's been doing that all season. You know, uh, the first couple of years here, she was a right side hitter for us and tremendous player. And uh, not many people know that prior to that, she was a starting setter at North Dakota State University for two years and. And when she came here, she didn't want to set. And so we said, that's fine. And then, you know, her fifth year, we had great setters and we needed a setter. And uh, she just was just unbelievable as a setter. And she just does it in such a quiet way and a graceful way. And all of a sudden you look and she's got, like you said, a triple double. That might be her 10th or 11th triple double this season that she's had. And, you know, GPAC player of the year and region player of the year and then national player of the year. Now, talk about that really quickly. I, I know uh, there are a couple of, of players uh, who we just mentioned that will be receiving and are receiving honors today. Yeah. It, um, you know, a lot of that has to do with the the success of our program. Um, you know, Callie and, and, and Anna Holen uh, two years ago were first team All-Americans. And last year, uh, Anna was first team and Callie was second team and all tournament team. And so they're, they're, Players that, you know, their names are, are known around the, the country. But when when Callie jumped into the setting position as well, that's when, uh, you know, things really took off and just has garnered a lot of respect. And rightfully so. She's a, a, got a tremendous volleyball IQ, uh, has a great way of running our team uh, setting wise. And she just sets such a great ball. And so I just just really proud of them. Obviously, you know, the old cliches, you'd rather win a national championship than individual awards. And in this case, they, they end up getting both. Um, you know, and so uh, to have both of those playing six rotations and then Ellie Holen as well, uh, playing Anna's little sister or libero plays six rotation. Those are three key players. 
Uh, Coach, and I do want to, to mention Ellie in, in this also. By the way, we're, you're watching Midwest Sports Net. Please consider subscribing to the channel. We would appreciate that. We talk about small college sports and more throughout the Midwest and beyond right here as we're visiting today with John Hagerly, who is the coach of the national champion at Jimmy's. I know that has a nice ring to it. Yeah. Uh, national champion Jimmy's uh, coming away with the 2022 uh, NAI Volleyball Championship. Coach, uh, let, let's uh, let's go right on into, into Ellie, too. Ellie Holen, Lexi Olson, Paige Oswald. I, I could go pretty much up and down your roster, and it's been a great season for all of them. Yeah, yeah you know, and one of the things we knew, we lost some veteran players. We had some great teams in the last couple of years that have, have really kind of moved us to the next level uh, in volleyball. And because of that, I feel we were able to take the step this year uh, to move forward. And um, Ellie was the libero last year in the national tournament. She was the defensive uh, player of the tournament. This year, she was the defensive player of the tournament and and now uh, de- de- the nation's defensive player of the year. And, um, you know, she the, the funny thing about her is her, her and her sister are best friends, but it's fun when they're in the back row together because they're actually trying to steal balls from each other and (laughs) Ellie's always been a little bit more fierce in that and I think it's because she's the the number eight of eight in the family and so Anna always kind of steps back and there's so many balls that are going to be right to Anna and Ellie just kind of zips in front and plays them but her range is just crazy unbelievable and and a big part of that is she's just so quick and so fast and so athletic uh, you know that she you know when we played in the championship uh, it took her a little while to get used to the pace that uh, a couple of those outside hitters were hitting. And then all of a sudden uh, she was just digging ball after ball after ball. And it was a good thing that it's an arena that is an incredibly high ceiling because the pace of those balls, when she dig it, she needed room to, to keep it on our side. And uh, there was some unbelievable rallies where uh, they would go up and just unload on a ball. Monica Sellis grunts <laughs> as they're swinging at it. And then we would dig it, and then we would pound it back, and they would dig it. They were a, they were a great team. It was a great battle, and, and, you know, really it could have went either way at the end. It just was who had the momentum at the end, and fortunately it was us. Yeah. Uh, Holen, Ellie Holen, by the way, 44 digs in the championship match and and uh, well worthy of those honor fifth in the country in digs for the season. Coach, 37-2 and two this year on an 18-match winning streak right now. Uh, let's go back just a little bit because you – Go undefeated through the regular season into the playoffs last year. Your only loss of the season was in the national semifinals, that being against Park last year. So you come into the new year and open the season with a loss. Uh, so that, you know, it's, uh, how's this going to go? Is everything going to be all right? Uh, I wound up being only one of only two losses on the year. But I found it interesting. You open the season with a loss against a team from Oregon who wound up being the number one team in the country for, for a while there. And your other loss was a GPAC loss, which is, my goodness, what a tough league that is. That there was only one in league was probably really even a, a statement in and of itself. To Midland, you, you come back in the quarterfinals or semifinals, get the victory over Midland. Uh, vengeance, a little bit of vengeance right there. And then the final game of the season, you you beat a team from Oregon in Corbin. So uh, a little bit of symmetry there to the schedule. Talk about the, the year. Yeah, uh, we could even go back a little bit last spring. Uh, you know, we lost – two All-American caliber middles from our team. We lost both of our setters. We lost our DS and we lost a, a right side, all conference right side. So we lost a significant amount of players from a team that had been in the national semifinals two years in a row. And so in our mind, it's okay, well, let's just not let the bottom drop too far. Let's try to compete at a level. And I remember meeting. And so in the spring, we, we tried to play some really good teams. We played some D1 and D2 teams and, uh, we really kind of got our butts kicked, uh, you know, and it was, and I kept saying to our team, Hey, we have to have the courage to take our lumps. I'm afraid we don't have, the, that's what we're going to have to do. That was our, our thought. And we came into the fall that way. And I talked to our captains and I said, you know what, you guys, I think that uh, if we finish top five in our conference, it's going to be a successful year. And they kind of looked at me like, come on coach. And I said, Oh, you guys, that's, we're, it's it's going to be tough. We're going to take our lumps. And so, you know, first match we go out against Eastern Oregon. We actually played pretty well, but we had 18 service errors, and that's what did it. And we lost in four. And uh, I remember my assistant coach, Jake, goes, well, we're on a two-game losing streak now. <laughs> I was like, oh, brother. I said, well, buckle up. It could be a rough ride. And then what happens after that? We go on, uh, you know, an 18-match win streak and beat, you know, a ton of teams. And, and then we lose at home to Midland. Um, 
and Midland has been a little bit of our nemesis in our conference. Uh, you know, the first time we, or the second time we were in the final four, we met them in the final four. We beat them twice during the season, and then they beat us in four. Um, and then they came in here, and we were up two sets to one in, in October, and then they ended up stealing the last two steps, sets and beating us. And so there's a lot of emotion in that match. And plus, we've been in the semifinals three times in a row and haven't been able to, to get past that. And so that one was um, an emotional match up and down. And it was when when we won that, that was pretty exciting. Well, and, and rightfully so. What a year. And yeah. uh, I'm – I, I appreciate as someone watching from the outside, and I, I appreciate you didn't you didn't stick with the two match losing streak. So that yeah. uh, you're able to able to turn that around in a big way, and it, it it winds up working out well. Coach, really quickly, I know you've had you know less than 48 hours realistically to to look back that much. I, you'll have more time to get to to watch the match again and and prepare for next season because it all doesn't end right now. That's the yeah. joys of being a college coach. Yeah. You go right back into it, recruiting and all of those uh, joys that, that you get to be a part of. But looking back on this season, I think you've already looked back on it a little bit. What, what do you think you'll, uh, you'll recall? What are, what are the, the hallmarks of, of this team that, that you'll think of? Yeah, you know, um, this team, when we were playing Midland and we were feeling some pressure and just not playing real well, I called a timeout and I said, you guys remember why we're doing this. We're not doing this to win. We're doing this to inspire people. Uh, and that started, um, and I don't know if you're aware of this, Joy, but uh, when we were playing Dort in September, uh, we were got done with our second set. We were tied 1-1, and we were switching sides, and Anna and Ellie Holen's mom went into cardiac arrest uh, in the stands right behind our bench, three rows behind our bench. Um, and, and she just, that was it, her heart just stopped. And so it happened right in front of us, and um, praise the Lord, there was an ER doctor there. Who came over and started doing chest compressions and so we we had to take our team out of the building anna's already a registered nurse so she says to me why are they giving my mom chest compressions and i said anna i think they need you over there so she went over there and ellie went over there and we went out and the dort team came around us and we just prayed out in the hallway for a long time and um, they had to do chest compressions for a long time they had to use the defibrillator a number of times and they finally resuscitated her um, and, and then she went into cardiac arrest three more times that day um, on the way to Fargo. And, and it was looking pretty dismal. And so it was a, it was a traumatic experience. And uh, the Dort community, I, I remember walking out of the gym to go see where our bus was. And there was a couple hundred people with their AD praying on, out on the lawn outside their, their gym. And, and I had the opportunity to address them and talk a little bit about who Karen Holen is. Um, and then, you know, it, we're, we're riding home and it's dark and it's a six hour drive and it's heavy on our bus and we're getting reports that she went into cardiac arrest a few more times. And, you know, the Holens aren't with us. They're obviously with their mom. And, um, you know, and, and so we're praying and we're praying for victory and we're, you know, we know that what God can do and, and, and all that stuff. And, and what happens, you know, that, that she gets the hospital, she's doing fine. They, they go and they start checking her heart, nothing wrong with her heart. They couldn't find anything wrong. Uh, she becomes lucid again and she writes down a couple questions. I think the third question she wrote down on a piece of paper was, did we win? You know, and, and we got a text of that. And, and so then, you know, um, and then, and, and she just keeps getting better and better. Um, and oh, praise God. Yeah. And, and then we ended up having to play Dakota Wesleyan top 10 team in the country at home without Anna Holen and without Ellie Holen, you know, and, and so we go out and we beat them in five. And in one of the things that we came up with as a, as a team prior to that is our number one job is to inspire people and especially the Holen family, because we knew they'd be watching on live stream. I think it might've been on Beck TV at the time. And I said, we said, Hey, they're going to, we need to inspire them through this they we, they need to see us fight and they need to see us play with joy and they need to see us play with spirit and they need to be inspired and so that was probably the greatest win of this season and it sounds crazy but um that's that was our goal and so we're in the midland match and so we continued that and then we're in the midland match and and i brought that up and and then things changed and and it was the same in the finals it, we just we just claim that this isn't about winning and losing this is about we have an opportunity to inspire a whole bunch of people. 
right. by just how we interact and how we carry ourselves and how hard we compete. And so let's do that. We call it being tasty. We want our flavor to be tasty. So when, when someone sees our team play, they say, oh, my gosh, I just love – I don't know what it is, but I just love something about how they play. And uh, I felt our team did that this year. And I think that it inspired a whole bunch of people. And, you know, the only the only person we can give credit to that is God. And that's what Karen Holland did. Every moment now she meets people, she says, all the glory goes to God. I had a 5% chance of surviving. And here I am completely healthy. And that's all I'm going to do is just point to God. So that defines the season for me. Wow. Well, then uh, you... I, I guess I'm, I'm reminded of uh, the movie I, Robot Detective. You've asked the right question. I think I asked the right question this yeah. time. I may not always do it, but this time, because your answer was absolutely fantastic, and I'm inspired by yeah. the story that you told. And no, I did not know that. Uh, I appreciate you sharing that, and, and hopefully with the folks who are watching then, uh, that they're inspired as well. Coach, yeah. uh, a fantastic season. Obviously ended on a positive note for you all against a very tough Corbin team, too, and uh, just a, a great year. We look forward to continuing to follow the program, and I know the roster is going to continue to change. It's it's going to be an, a, a neat new look for next year as well, but enjoy 2022 in the national championship season. Coach John Hagerly, thank you so much for taking time with us today here on the Summit on Midwest Sportsnet. Joey, thanks for having me on again. Um, I remember the last time, and I enjoyed it tremendously, and I've enjoyed this just as much. You do a great job, and I really appreciate what you do for, for sport and for – uh, for what we do. Thank you, sir.